All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to welcome from myself, Justin, and AJ here, uh, and AKA Pocket Aces. I'm looking very, very forward to this one. I have seen AJ everywhere. I have listened to many of his uh, of his uh, talks and do appreciate what he brings to to the blockchain, to crypto, um, to all of us. And I'm looking very forward to uh, meeting him face to face today uh, and and getting to know him a little bit better, getting to know what he's involved in, and uh, more specifically this Layer One X that's uh, coming in the next uh, I guess six months or so ish. Um, so I'm going to get right to the point, and we'll obviously like and subscribe. Let's get that algorithm going so we can bring some more people to the content uh if there's any questions please don't hesitate to put those obviously where you where you normally do either below or to the side depending on what you're watching on and um and aj i guess first off uh, because you haven't been on my channel before and and i like i mentioned i think before we went live i think there's possibly some people that may not have met you i doubt it but just in case i would really love a little bit of an intro to you and who you are and uh take it away Absolutely, brother. Justin, awesome to be here, man. Uh, shout out to you and your whole community. Uh, your channel's been blowing up, so uh, again, it's good to see you taking that step to uh, be a YouTuber. I know a lot of people say, man, we, I can't do that. How do these guys do that? But I never thought I would be a YouTuber either, and uh, here we are. We've been running our own EMP uh, channel. Uh, from day one. So, uh, but yes, my name is AJ Brockman. Uh, I am the uh, team lead at EMP. Uh, I am a crypto veteran. I've uh, been in the space uh, for about seven years, uh, full time crypto uh, for about four of those years. Uh, and uh, as you can also see, uh, I'm also in a wheelchair. So, I have a neuromuscular condition uh, where uh, I'm essentially a quadriplegic. Uh, but I still have full feeling, uh, and I wasn't in a, an accident of any kind. Uh, I just was born uh, where my body doesn't produce muscle. So that being said, I've always really been into technology, uh, especially assistive uh, technology, and that kind of led me uh, down the rabbit hole of crypto, um, uh, and that's how this whole journey began. Uh, I'm also an, an artist by background. Uh, I, I do uh, digital painting, again, using computer software uh, and uh, assistive uh, uh, applications uh, to actually paint. So uh, I have a, I had a career, uh, I went uh, to college, got a Bachelor of Fine Arts. I worked in the corporate world uh, as a lead designer for a big uh, PR firm. I got really burned out with that, uh, focused on my own art, uh, and actually did a painting for President Barack Obama uh, back in 2012. So that was my real claim to fame. I had a lot of success in the real world. I opened my own art gallery. Uh, we opened a craft beer bar, uh, a, a 500 person music venue here in South Florida, uh, and eventually ended up buying the whole plaza uh, that all of those businesses were in. So I have a lot of business background uh, in the real world, uh, and I bring all that to EMP as well. So EMP is a seniors protocol that is paid to the price of Ethereum. Uh, and uh, we've had some great success. Uh, again, any project that has made it through the bear market uh, and been around for more than a year uh, is, is, is pretty uh, a great accomplishment, especially in the current landscape that we're in. Uh, and so, you know, uh, obviously, uh, we, we uh, the peg, everybody says one peg. Uh, our peg has been slipping, uh, but we've been paying APR every single day, regardless of where PEG is. And uh, we built a lot of innovative tech uh, on top of our seniors protocol, uh, specifically the DOS uh, or detonator uh, uh, contracts. Um, and we, we not only license those to other protocols, but um, it's allowed us to have a ton of liquidity uh, on our, our native token, which again, a lot of other seniors protocols were never able to accomplish. So uh, again, we're uh, we're doing great things, and uh, we have a lot more in store with EMP uh, as we move into even the next phase. And what we're here for today is the L1X uh, uh, news. Again, uh, building the launch decks on this brand new blockchain. So we have a lot to talk about, Justin. Uh, so yeah, man, I don't know what uh, what you want me to jump into first, but I'm happy to go over everything. Nice. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you, you do half my job for me, which is perfect because you went right, yeah. into EMP right on I time as I was about to yeah. ask that, but <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. And obviously some fans in the house, I think I, I do appreciate uh, having AJ on here. Uh, like I said, it's, I had um, Don from MB, uh, Danny from MDB on here and, and now you, and those, you two are the kind of the, the 
guys that have been just carrying this the space on through all of the ups and downs that it's gone through. So I appreciate you guys and what you do in this in this space because that's I'm about finding ways to make it survive and make it grow. So I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. That means a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know which direction you want to go right away, but obviously there is, I guess, a partnership also that kind of, so I don't know what kind of the first step was of how this evolved, but there is Dex, uh, there's a Dex that's kind of happening and then there's layer one X. Is there a place you want to kind of start with the discussion? Yeah, totally. So let me back up just a little bit more um, and wrap up kind of where we're at with EMP. Um, sure. We we are, are moving towards what we're calling EMP fusion. And with that, um, we're moving towards uh, a, a model where we're actually going to be um, uh, transitioning to what we're calling protocol-owned emissions. So typically with a senior model, you know, you see uh, uh, all the, the tokens that are minted, uh, there's high inflation, um, and that's great in terms of yield, but uh, on the downside, you know, uh, no matter how educated you try and make your community, uh, which we have done, I mean, we've been the forefront of education in crypto as well. We did an online academy, uh, a free online academy that was over an hour long uh, on EMP alone. And so that also helped us uh, um, uh, get to where we are. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, people, there is a lot of human error, uh, especially with how senior protocols work. Um, so we're really moving away from that. And we took note from Dex Finance. Um, they're another leader in the space. Um, uh, they have their uh, uh, their seniors protocol that's pegged to um, actually a stable token uh, that has never lost peg. Uh, and they have the same sort of protocol owned emissions model. Um, so uh, we have been talking with them uh, for months prior to this uh, about uh, the final form of EMP. Uh, and Fusion really is its own animal. Uh, we definitely borrow a lot of ideas from uh, Dex Finance, uh, but we, we this is completely built from the ground up, um, new new tech, we're not forking uh, anything. So, uh, but that being said, we developed this amazing relationship with Dex Finance. And we thought, you know, I, I thought in the back of my head, man, I really would love to work with these guys on a more uh, uh, permanent level, uh, no matter what that looks like. And so, you know, uh, we kept in touch uh, over the months and um, one of our previous team, uh, or uh, he was an extension of our team, a very dedicated community member, his name is Mashu. Uh, he took a position with this brand new blockchain called uh, L1X. And so, um, uh, the, honestly, the opportunity kind of fell from the sky uh, and fell in our lap. So uh, we did a private um, uh, uh, raise uh, for L1X to begin with, and they were so impressed uh, with our community, uh, with, again, my leadership uh, and our team, um, that they said, listen, we, we would love for you guys to pitch, um, uh, you know, building on L1X itself. So uh, I got with, again, the guys from Dex Finance uh, and said, hey, you know, uh, I love what you guys are doing. We have the, the capability to, to really uh, bring everything together. Uh, and so we pitched to be an actual multi-chain Dex, uh, something that is totally new and innovative because of the L1X uh, technology. Um, and uh, we were happy to announce that uh, literally just two days ago, uh, it is official that we will be launching the, uh, the launch Dex of L1X uh, built by both Dex Finance uh, and EMP. Um, so that that's really a long, yeah, long story yeah. short. Yeah, that's a lot of how the background, uh, how this all came about. Um, and now we're we're doing a raise. Uh, we're extending that presale uh, to to the public um, to really hopefully get a lot more adoption uh, onto L1X. And mm -hmm. you know, uh, again, we can go into the tech next. But I know you've looked at some uh, of the white paper and. You know, even if L1X can deliver on half of what they are saying yeah. they can, this is absolutely revolutionary for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and it does look quite interesting on how it can adapt to things. The speed, obviously, uh, like looking at the trial and stuff, uh, I definitely want to have a little bit of a chat on those three points, uh, if you could, and um, to just kind of really narrow down to what, what value it brings, because the, the differentiators are what really matters the most. Um, and one of the big things that I guess I noted from this, and I'm sure is something you're going to want to get into, is, and probably my biggest draw from this, is the fact that it's 
easy for anybody to get into this one. This is one that actually could bring new people that are less tech savvy, uh, that have desires in the blockchain. Um, it's a very easy transition with the way the, the wallet is set up and that kind of stuff. So I guess maybe starting there because it really does bring me some joy when I see opportunities for new people to get into the space. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been a big, uh, you know, uh, whistleblower on, like, we don't need another copy and paste blockchain. Uh, and even if you had an amazing blockchain, uh, if nobody's building on it, then it's worthless. And so L1X solves all this right out the gate. They are an actual virtual machine um, that is compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine and Rust-based uh, um, uh, chains like Solana. So uh, this, again, is brand new technology, something that, you know, a lot of other uh, chains have claimed uh, interoperability. The, the big word is interoperability. Uh, again, some people are like, what does that mean? Uh, essentially, that means that you're able to interact with all chains um, without using a bridge. And so, um, again, you know, that that is something that, uh, you know, Polkadot with their pair chains, they uh, tried to deliver, you know, a lot of these uh, side chains on uh, L L ones and L twos. Uh, you know, they they say that they are, but when you really go to use it, uh, you, you, there's still bridging involved, uh, or the the process is just not very intuitive. So, uh, and uh, another amazing thing that no other chain has been able to accomplish uh, is um, not only being interoperable in terms of tokens, but also interoperable in terms of logic, which means um, uh, smart contracts on different uh, chains will now be able to communicate with each other through L1X. So those are just some really high level things that make this really different. Uh, and again, just to back up a little, you know, uh, we, we uh, knowing the tech that L1X brings, um, that is why I was so adamant on trying to put together um, a DEX. Uh, and again, now being the, the launch DEX uh, is huge because um, uh, to your point, Justin, uh, you know, we have a ton of killer things that we're bringing um, to even the decks that is very norm or newbie friendly. Um, we have a plan. And again, we'll, we'll have a whole nother, maybe AMA, hopefully we'll be back, but a whole nother white paper and a whole nother uh, uh, roadmap on the decks itself. Uh, we're just focused on this race uh, until March 14th, but um, uh, it will act a lot like a centralized uh, exchange. So from the front end and the user experience, the UI, uh, it will be very user friendly. Uh, there'll be an opportunity to have gasless uh, transactions because you'll be able to uh, operate within that exchange. Uh, that that's not fee-less, uh, but again, it'll save you on the gas. Uh, you know, if you want to swap between tokens, um, and uh, we adopt again that centralized exchange model. So unlike an AMM, you know, like PancakeSwap or Uniswap. Um, this will be more like a, you know, an FTX experience. And, you know, I hate to even bring FTX up, uh, but they, they gained a lot of market share because of how user-friendly their, uh, their, their software was. And uh, we have plans on, again, emulating that. Um, but in the background, everything will be 100% de uh, decentralized. So, uh, again, not your keys, not your crypto. Uh, so you will always have custody of your own keys. Um, and again, like you said, uh, because of that user experience first, um, uh, I think it's going to be a major, major bonus for potential user adoption uh, and, and ease of use uh, for those people that don't want to, you know, download 10 different RPCs. They don't know what chain to go to, you know, and then they have to bridge, which takes, you know, up to half an hour and costs, you know, uh, hundreds of dollars depending on the size of your transaction. So uh, L1X solves all of that. I know those are really big claims uh, to be made, uh, but there is a working test net uh, that they have already. You can go to the L1X uh, Discord and experiment with it right now. Uh, and everything they're saying uh, is actually possible um, uh, on the test net. Um, and, and not only does this apply to tokens and logic, uh, but it also applies to NFTs. So again, imagine launching an NFT project on, you know, uh, AVAX or, or Matic uh, and now having all the 
uh, uh, access to the capital on ETH. I mean, all the ETH whales uh, are into their NFTs, uh, but nobody really builds over there because of the fees. Uh, so again, it, it opens up a whole different uh, uh, avenue of, of capital synergy and capital efficiency uh, because now you have all access to all liquidity over all the chains. So it's, it's super, super unique. <laughs> Nice. No, that's brilliant. And uh, again, that ease of use, that ease of entry is is the barriers that we can take down are the better. Now, with that, I guess just a quick question that I don't know if I've heard when you've talked about that side of it. Is that also going to be an on-ramp from Fiat, even though it's uh, a de decentralized? For sure. So again, that, that probably won't happen on launch, uh, but we absolutely have a Fiat on and off ramp uh, uh, in the roadmap, um, as well as uh, lending and borrowing. I mean, again, uh, the DEX itself will be its own entity. We haven't even released the name yet. Uh, this is all like super duper early stuff. <laughs> so, but yeah, all, all will be ready. I mean, again, the, we've already started building. Um, DEX Finance had uh, a, a exchange that they were building um, and trying to kind of uh, duct tape uh, all of this interoperability together uh, with old tech uh, using uh, bridges and you know, uh, uh, atomic swaps and all that. Well, now that that's another reason why Dex Finance was so bullish on getting involved is they they can actually do everything they wanted to do, uh, you know, on a native layer uh, without having to use bridges now. So yeah. uh, that's another you know why we brought Dex Finance on uh, as well as the EMP uh, team to really build this. And because we're the launch Dex uh, again, think you know Pancake Swap to uh, B BSC, um, uh, not only will we have all the volume, you know, on day one, but we also have the support of L1X themselves. So yeah. uh, we have access to their dev team uh, and engineers. Um, so the DEX will be, you know, uh, fully functioning the day that that, that that chain goes live, for sure. Nice, that's amazing. Um... And I guess for getting involved right now, and and the big thing here, and again, I, I know this was mentioned probably in other other AMAs, but we always have to mention it is and is not financial advice. Um, but the really neat thing right now is, uh, it's someone in my case, I got into DeFi actually only about a year ago. Um, was really privileged to diversify in nodes and lose a lot of money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. trying to fill up, right? Oh man, Justin, for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, so. Uh, where was I going with that? So yeah, so so I'll not be I'll, I've, having only been here for a year, I actually don't think I've experienced a new blockchain. Um, and this is something that a lot of us, I think, have not done yet. And something that is truly unique and a unique opportunity, uh, being that a you guys are starting, I believe not to give out all the gravy and whatever, but I think at 10 cents right now is how you can get in at right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was muted. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. So let me let me go through that uh, again because I know a lot of people are used to just uh, these these DGM projects. Uh, they get in, they pump and dump, uh, and and it's game over for everybody. Well, you know, uh, an actual blockchain, let alone a a, a chain that is doing uh, revolutionary things again in term of, in terms of the interoperability, um, the 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 decentralization, the way the validators work, which we'll talk about in a minute here. Um, uh, but yeah, the the point is is that these are golden opportunities. I mean, you know, again, not to make measure, uh, uh, what is it, over promise uh, and under deliver. We like yeah. to do the opposite. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, ETH. Think about getting in at ETH. Uh, at 25 cents, the ICO price, or uh, BNB chain, you know, at three dollars, and and look where all that is now. You know, historically speaking, again, not financial advice, but historically, historically, historically speaking, uh, 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 layer ones and layer twos, uh, actual blockchain projects, uh, they do an average of 42x uh, uh, from their launch price, and uh, you're getting in through us at the pre-sale price uh, or seed price. Again, uh, that's amazing. I mean, it's 10 cents uh, uh, and the launch price is, is gonna be 50 cents. And you know, we're able to bring this opportunity because of the relationship that we have with L1X. And you know, they have a major appetite uh, on their side from venture capitalists, uh, but they've made a conscious effort not to uh, give in to those VCs, you know, uh, again, just to give an example, you know, Phantom, 
uh, they, they were almost exclusively funded by VCs. And so uh, that adds a whole other layer of centralization um, to the economics. So uh, not only did L1X want to spread out holders uh, through through this pre-sale, uh, but they know, you know, how uh, uh, savvy our community is. You know, uh, we've been trying to get this in front of more and more people. Uh, and that's why we've been doing these AMAs. Uh, but uh, the idea is that, again, uh, it's better to have uh, a lot of uh, smaller holders than, than giant VCs uh, that can potentially manipulate things down the road. Uh, and all the tokens are vested. So that's another really important thing to realize. Uh, again, typically when you're getting into, you know, a, a protocol uh, or, uh, you know, a DGEN project, uh, you, you get in the pre-sale, you get all your tokens on day one, uh, and then it's a dump fest. Well, uh, with L1X, exactly, straight down. Uh, with L1X, you are vested linearly for 15 months. So uh, again, I know that sounds like a long time, uh, and there is, you know, obviously some opportunity cost uh, that's associated with that. Uh, but say you invested $1,500, you would get $100 worth of tokens uh, once per month for 15 months. And so, you know, the idea, though, is that uh, because of that vesting schedule, uh, the launch price uh, will hold up uh, or even go up from launch price. Uh, so potentially, even if you had to sell, you know, uh, your your first allocation, you know, you could ROI uh, on your original within the first few months uh, by doing that. So again, not financial advice. And there's going to be so many um, uh, ways to earn with your L1X. That's another really important point is uh, the reason that we were given, um, originally it was a soft cap of 2.5 million uh, that we, we had to meet before uh, this would go through. But now that soft cap is removed, we're guaranteed that allocation. Uh, so if you contribute, you're getting L1X tokens uh, no matter what until we either reach the hard cap or we end uh, the pre-sale um, uh, because L1X is also doing their own raise congruently. Uh, but if you go through them, uh, that's more for fiat-based uh, contributions and you have to KYC with them as well. Uh, at EMP, we're running this raise uh, as an inter intermediary where uh, we KYC through our trust account. Uh, EMP has a, uh, uh, you know, an, uh, an, a setup, a, an actual trust uh, that we do business under. Um, and so that will be doing the KYC and you, uh, everything is again, compliant uh, in terms of both ends uh, so that we get the tokens from uh, L1 and then we distribute them to all of you that uh, have gone into the pre-sale. So, uh, and yeah, like I was saying, uh, there will be an opportunity to stake uh, or even provide liquidity of L1X tokens. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, L1X becomes a, a yield producing asset mm -hmm. as well. Um, we're big on that at EMP and, and Dex Finance guys, we're really about real yield uh, rather than relying on, you know, new users or Ponzi uh, economics, we want to have real yield. And so by having the DEX uh, transact in L1X tokens, rather than like, you know, say a cake uh, for PancakeSwap, yeah. uh, cake token, um, uh, that gives an immediate use case for L1X and could potentially really help uh, the price appreciation because it's, it's actually more lucrative uh, to stake uh, or provide liquidity with your L1X than selling it. So again, those are all really exciting things. And uh, by doing that, you get a portion of the actual fees that the DEX will generate. So uh, it's much more of a revenue share model than a token, uh, a tokenized model uh, that you usually see with DEXs. And you know, just to put that in perspective, uh, does about $400,000 a day in fees. Uh, and, and Uniswap does 4 million a day in fees. So we could get um, even a small percentage of that market share, which I think we'll get a large percentage because of the interoperability um, and just making a better experience. Um, that could be massive revenue for not only you know the DEX, uh, but also then uh, EMP and, and DEX finance uh, individually as well. So it's really a win-win for everybody. 
Nice. Um, and just before we move on to the next part that I want to get into, which is kind of the trilemma, um, with that then, is there, just because you did mention, obviously, the two ways to get in, and that's where Abe came in, and we'll go into more details about that towards the end for the calls to action and whatnot. Um, but uh, is there any disadvantage, I guess, of going through you guys as opposed to going through them? I, I get the not KYCing thing, but is there any other difference, just so we're transparent for everybody, or is it pretty much the same either way for you? It's just yep. token. Yeah, absolutely. So no, great question. Um, yeah, it is exactly the same. Again, we uh, th there's no advantage or disadvantage uh, other than having the KYC or not KYC. I guess the only uh, you know difference is if you would prefer to use fiat, um, you're probably better off going through L1X themselves. Uh, but if you want to use crypto, uh, our raise uh, is probably you know the better bet. And uh, yeah, and and there that you can ask uh, those questions in. The L1X chat as well. Um, they're they're running this race again congruently with us, uh, and there there could be a very slim chance that um, because we are doing the raise at the same time um, that we do end our pre-sale um, uh, before that five million cap because there is only about three point five million uh, tokens left, a uh, million dollars worth of tokens left. Um, so uh, we are guaranteed that 2.5 million. Uh, so again, anybody contributing now uh, is guaranteed, um, uh, but it may end up uh, ending sooner uh, depending on, again, that appetite. Nice. Um, and so what I would like to get through and at least make sure we get through these three little uh, bullet points of mine, because um, the trilemma, obviously, if people don't know about it, there's three things that a blockchain uh, is trying to solve. And, and there has been people that have come closer. Uh, and I'm not going to go into other chains because we're here to talk about your guys. Uh, but I would like to know, obviously, specifically, and I know there's some really cool things, at least with the first point. Um, so the first one I'd like to get into is the decentralization, um, which I know you guys have. And I, I've read that and, and very excited for what that's going to do so if you want to maybe take us through that absolutely and this is again something that is truly revolutionary with l1x and you know just to clarify as well you know i i l1x is not our blockchain you know we've been working with them hand in hand and uh, i'm going to do my best in all these ways to answer uh the best i can but if i do say something uh you know that may not be 100 percent accurate uh please definitely do your own research uh in the l1x chat um, and, and make sure that you fully understand what's happening. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we've looked at the, t the code, uh, we've looked at the tech and, you know, it, it really is something different. And so uh, in terms of the decentralization, um, there is an amazing new way uh, that they are approaching things. So unlike proof of stake uh, or proof of work, we have uh, validating the network, um, they are, are using basically uh, proof of participation where, uh, as long as you're using the uh, the L1X wallet, which again, you, you, you don't have to use the L1X wallet. You can use uh, MetaMask as well, uh, but they will be launching with their own wallet. And uh, as long as you're, you're using the network, uh, any, any smart device or any chip set, uh, again, that could be a, a computer, a phone, uh, a smart TV, uh, a, a, a refrigerator, uh, even a smart water bottle, uh, anything that has a chip uh, and that is connected to the internet uh, could potentially be a validator. And so what this means is, you know, there could, again, potentially be uh, millions, if not billions of devi devices that are uh, validating the network. And, you know, as as that, that does wonders for decentralization um, and uh, not being able to manipulate, you know, consensus. Uh, but it also is really awesome uh, for participants because now you get a, a, a chance of being rewarded. So the rewards are also democratized where uh, just by using the network, you qualify as a validator and you may see, you know, some fees uh, in, in your wallet when you log on uh, because you randomly uh, some of the validation fees. So again, there's some really cool uh, innovative stuff uh, that is amazing for again not only decentralization and interoperability but also adoption again i mean you know who wouldn't want to be able to just uh interact with the chain and maybe get some rewards out of it uh just for participating so yeah it's really exciting definitely haven't gotten anything from any of the other ones unless i put liquidity in or something exactly. but, um, yeah, totally. so yeah now is there larger validators or anything else with that we don't need to if you don't know we can leave it at that but is there yeah there, something else absolutely so 
there will be node operators as well. Um, you know, and again, the, the details uh, on that is probably better to ask yeah. uh, in L1X. But uh, again, it's pretty much like any other uh, node operator. Again, we're not talking about uh, those uh, those uh, 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 fictitious node projects. We're talking about uh, actual <laughs> nodes. No, nope, I don't um, need any more yeah, back yeah. <laughs> thinking about that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Not to rub salt in the wound. Uh, oh. For sure, bro. But yeah, and again, it'll be uh, you have to have a large holding of L1X uh, and you have to run some software uh, to run a node. But yeah, uh, that's a whole nother level for sure. Okay. But again, I think with these smaller ones, that creates a, a much larger decentralization than we've seen out of anything. So that's a pretty neat little uh, nugget for this for you guys or for, for sure. One. Um, and then I guess in security, I, I now this kind of goes hand in hand, I guess, with what we've just talked about in a way. Is there anything else that you have nuggets of information on, or or is that again something for them to research in the in the Discord? Yeah. So again, the more uh, validators you have, typically, you know, the less risk you have of a, a soft fork, you know, or, or any consensus uh, issues. Um, and, and really, the number one thing in terms of security, though, uh, is the fact that this, it's really the interoperability, because what L1X does is it eliminates the need for bridging. So typically, with a bridge, you know, you're, you're essentially uh, putting up a token, uh, that token is then being burned. Uh, you're then receiving that token on the other chain, you know, and not only is this very inefficient, but it's a major, major exploit uh, or attack vector in crypto. I mean, last year alone, uh, $2 billion was uh, uh, lost in bridges, uh, again, from either hacks or, you know, issues with code. Um, so, you know, not only is this, uh, a lot more user friendly, uh, but it's also way more uh, secure. And and again, uh, not having that risk of bridge attacks uh, is huge. And and you're dealing with native assets as well. You know, again, we built on BSC, uh, even though we're uh, with with EMP, we built on BSC because. Um, uh, we, we, we couldn't afford the gas fees. You know, if you unstake and stake uh, in the pools, you know, you'd be paying 10 or $20 a, a transaction. Well, uh, think about having the interoperability where, you know, uh, uh, you, you get native because right now we're, we're transacting in uh, BEP20 Ethereum. So that is basically ETH that is uh, reserved uh, by Binance. Uh, you just have to hope uh, that Binance has that ETH uh, backed one-to-one, -one, which again, that's not fun. I'm sure they do. Uh, but you can see where that might be an issue. So uh, with, with L1X, you're transacting in native assets. So it's actual Ethereum on the actual ETH blockchain um, uh, and, and any chain uh, in terms of what the native assets are. So that's really cool. And back to what I was saying earlier about uh, uh, the logic being uh, uh, operable so uh, all you have to do to be able to interact with l1x uh from a protocol standpoint is update about one or two lines of code in your smart contract to yes. where that will recognize um uh the the transactions so again it's almost like an emulator uh where l1x will be able to send logic uh and avoid the native gas fees uh, of those chains. So now you're also competing, you know, with uh, with ETH fees. Uh, and instead of twenty dollars, uh, the L1X fee is one cent maximum. Yeah. So uh, the throughput is huge. Again, a hundred thousand uh, transactions per second, and the fees are only a maximum of one cent. Now that does mean that the developer has to update their code. Uh, but that is a lot less of a uh, heavy lift than having them literally rebuild their project uh, on a new, which uh, is the current standard. So, you know, I think that would do wonders for uh, adoption as well, uh, because not only are you uh, uh, having access uh, to all the liquidity on all the chains, but you do it by updating the code, uh, you know, with a few lines. Uh, so yeah, big, big, big difference. Nice. So if I'm understanding that part correctly, just as a little bit of uh, understanding for me and possibly for the viewers, um, I could technically, I'm, I'm creating a protocol. I can now quickly move it over here. And instead of having access or having to redo the contract in five or six different places, I can do it just here, but still take in funds or hold 
like a uh, hold uh tokens or coins of those five or six different blockchains avax bsc all that stuff yeah 100 percent. and again wow. you know uh that that will be a lot easier to to see with the l1x wallet uh again it will be interoperable with metamask uh, and who knows if we get enough market share metamask may uh, update their interface uh, because it is kind of a new concept to see native assets from every chain uh, in mm -hmm. one one wallet. Um, so, but yeah, uh, I mean, all of that is possible. And again, you know, um, just by updating that little bit of code, developers are incentivized uh, to adopt L1X um, because again, it's much more capital efficient uh, as well. And 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 again, the the, the throughput and the fees uh, could be way less than the chain that you're actually built on which is nice. again, revolutionary. Yeah. Wild. Um, and we have a little sidebar going on here. So I thought I'd quickly go to that before we go to scalability, which yeah, I think we sure. kind of answered, but um, so Abe just kind of goes through um, set of partners with different wallet companies and that kind of stuff. So we've gone through that a tiny bit. There is their own wallet, but it uh, it is compatible with uh, MetaMask as well for the people that already have that and maybe don't want to get another one, but there's some value to getting that new one because of the fact of the way it interacts with everything. Absolutely, 100% correct. So again, just like you would, you know, update your RPC uh, to interact with uh, uh, ETH mainnet or, or Binance uh, chain, uh, you would have uh, the L1X RPC through your MetaMask. And so you would still have to update that. Uh, but that would be the last time that you would ever have to change uh, RPCs. Uh, again, you know, because of the interoperability. So, Which yeah, be and, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and then it looks like I'm assuming Sticky Beans must be from uh, from them, but she obviously they obviously answered the question a bit there. But um, and uh, then along with that sidebar, we also went to the question would be uh, the new L1X wallet give you access to all the chains, which we have answered, but as well, uh, Stinky Beans was kind enough to answer as well. Um, yep, so that's awesome. great. Yep, Stinky is our, uh, one of our admins. And again, we have a lot of uh, uh, overlap uh, with the L1X uh, you know, community already. Uh, nice. So yeah, he's jumping in to help. Thank you, Stinky Beans. We appreciate it, brother. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And thanks for joining. And we did get a little special guest in there. So we should give a little hi and shout out to you, Bonks. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Alex showing up. We have an AMA uh, with Alex uh, later uh, this coming week. Uh, nice. So yeah, uh, great to have him here too. Yeah, yeah no, he's uh, a great guy. Another great, another one of the greats in the industry, sorry, in the in the space. So I appreciate, appreciate totally. him as well. Um, so, and then the last thing, obviously, and I think again, the trilem is a funny thing because all these chains haven't been able to totally do it, but all the three things kind of go hand in hand if it's well thought out. And so it seems like, again, you guys have kind of found a little bit of a niche into this. I do have some other chains that I'm passionate about, uh, but this one definitely, again, because I'm able to get in before it launches, it, it excites me. I must admit, not financial advice. Um, so, uh, scalability wise, I guess, again, we've kind of answered that in the sense that with these phones, with these nodes, um, is there anything else, again, we want to add about that for the that final kind of leg of the tri of the trilemma? Yeah, absolutely, brother. And again, I want to elaborate too. You know, I made a joke when we first uh, were doing uh, this announcement and, you know, when, we, when I fully did all the due diligence in L1X, like I was so bullish that uh, I made a joke and I said, uh, L1X is going to be the one chain to rule them all. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, and I was on, on uh, uh, an AMA uh, with, with team members from L1X uh, and Manchu actually said, you know, uh, he was laughing, but he said, you know what, brother, uh, that's really not the case where L1X is looking to unite all the chains. And that really blew my mind because it's true. I mean, not, not it's not really about competition. It's about an option that will actually unite all the chains uh, and make it much more capital efficient uh, in terms of scalability uh, as well. Um, because of, again, the, the throughput, uh, the tech, you know, it's its own virtual machine that they have built from the ground up. Uh, uh, they, this isn't like, and again, I don't mean to fud or cause uh, because I'm an investor in Pulse Chain, uh, but with Pulse Chain, uh, you know, uh, they did their raise first and then took two years to build it and it's still not out. Well, L1X has built the code already. Uh, again, the test net is functioning and now they're going to market. So uh, it's a whole different uh, scenario where again, you know, they're shooting for uh, August of this year. Um, you know, even if it's maybe again, uh, we all know crypto, you know, uh, coding is hard. Uh, maybe it is a month or two 
uh, of a difference in that, but it's definitely not going to be years uh, of, of, of delay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the scalability is there. Uh, 100,000 uh, uh, transactions per second, uh, which is the fastest uh, that any of the chains are able to offer. Uh, one cent maximum transactions uh, as well, which is huge. And uh, that opens up massive, massive uh, scalability with micropayments. So again, all the blockchains, uh, you know, have, have their criticism of, you know, how, when are they ever going to be adopted in the real world? You know, who's going to wait uh, an hour for a Bitcoin uh, verification and uh, who's going to pay $20 in e fees uh, to, to buy a coffee? Well, again, through L1X, because of the throughput and the low fees, you know, you could spend a one cent transaction fee uh, on a coffee or an envelope or a banana. Uh, and it really opens up the door uh, for payment gateways uh, and, and payment processors uh, as well. And uh, again, uh, if you go into L1X Discord, um, they have a ton of partners uh, already. Uh, one of them is called uh, Wide, W uh, Y D E. Uh, and they are again hoping to to help uh, onboard uh, both onboard and off ramp uh, fiat and be an actual payment gateway, uh, as well as some other uh, um, HIPAA compliant um, uh, 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 medical companies that want to use the L1X uh, uh, layer to to transact uh, data. So there's a ton of awesome things that they're already having in the works uh, before the chain is even live. Nice. And that actually excites me quite a bit. And so my uh, background is I'm actually a small business advisor with a big, one of the big five banks in Canada. Um, and awesome, so brother. Yeah. that gives me some excitement because I know that my clients have massive, massive expenses when it comes to transactions at their, at their stores. So if something like, and I know that it's not going to be one cent on the fiat end, don't get me wrong, but for it not to be 30, 40, 60, 90 cents, uh, that would be huge for them as a cost saving. So that's fantastic to think that that could be closer to the future than than we think for them to save that kind of cost and give us an ability to work that in a really real way, real life. So that's 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 really cool. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. So, um, so I, I obviously I want to get some call to actions a little bit. I don't want to uh, rush this at all, though. So I'm happy to keep going as long as we'd like. I guess is there sure. anything that we've kind of haven't gotten into yet uh, that we definitely want to mention? And I apologize, I, I nothing's coming off the top of my head, but I, I also know that there's a lot of access to information right now and lots of different AMAs that you've done. So I do encourage everyone to take advantage of listening to your bonks uh to uh, uh to that handsome guy that has a voice uh from crypto um oh geez good day crypto good day. Um, yeah totally yeah. i know yeah um, that, 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 other guys, yeah so. everybody loves an australian accent right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no for sure so yeah i mean I, I think we've done an awesome job covering uh so far again we are doing uh an insane ama uh run uh, we've done about, uh, I don't know, I've lost count already. We've done probably about eight, eight AMAs. Uh, we have another probably 12 uh, or so in the pipeline. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, the idea is just to get the word out there, try to really educate people on this. Uh, L1X uh, is starting their own massive marketing campaign as well. Um, you know, and I just want to reiterate how early we are. You know, I know it, 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 it looks uh, maybe a little strange that, you know, we're, we're, we're marketing this as a seed round uh, and, and maybe a lot of you haven't even heard of L1X, um, but that's because we have had such an amazing relationship with them um, and they see the power of uh, our communities. Uh, and again, getting the word out there because it really is about adoption, you know, uh, the, the first few months uh, are going to be a grassroots effort, you know, until people realize, whoa, like this tech is, they actually pulled this off, you know, and, and it really is something that is revolutionary. Uh, and then that's when the floodgates open uh, in terms of adoption, for sure. So yeah, no, so far so good. Justin, you've gotten over a bunch, man. 
And yeah, I'm not in a rush either. So if anybody has questions, we we can go over the pre-sale, all that. So yeah, exactly. And sorry, I meant to actually put this in the background and then put it up, but it went and popped up on the screen on me. So still a little newbie sometimes. Um, no worries. Yeah. So yeah. So call to action, I guess, and we'll go through some more stuff too. And I and anywhere people want to take it. So by all means, if you guys have questions, uh, there is one earlier on that was I think more EMP focused. So I'll bring that up at one point too, because I have no issue going through some of that. And by all means, I would I would have you on ev any time ever again. I do appreciate you and and really enjoy listening to you talk. So thank you, brother. No, that means a lot, man. Again, I know uh, your audience is great. You know, shout out to James Felton. I know you were super uh, involved with his community, and now yeah. you're here doing it on your own. Uh, and yeah, we have an AMA with James coming up uh, as well. And that one will have uh, team members not only from uh, L1X, but also from Dexpy. Uh, so definitely yeah. tune into that one. Look yeah. forward to that one then for sure. So yes, definitely to that. Um, so obviously here is the website. I won't go into a whole lot of details here. It seems, so obviously there's a way to buy on here. And I did get kind of a, a code or whatever, but by the sounds of it, I think for most of us here anyways, we'll probably want to go the crypto route. So I will put in uh, the Discord's already in there and it will be in when it's lot when it's um, uh, reviewable for anybody that does come later. Uh, so definitely head over to the Discord. I think this is something like I often talk about things where I think we need to band together. Um, and I don't want to again give financial advice. I want people to band together in certain parts of this crypto land uh, only because we need to act as a team to help protect this space and help grow this space. And so certain projects that I get really passionate about, I, I would love to see everybody kind of go over there. And again, a blockchain launch this time through, especially one that really seems to be geared around the little guy a little bit more and not about big money getting involved and taking it all over like I see in a lot of them right now. Um, this is where I would think is my first call to action is get to the discord, uh, get to know this space, get to know this, this team and, and make your own decision from there by all means. Um, but a launch definitely has some opportunities that we don't see every day. Uh, and a lot of people go, I wish I had been here. I wish I had been there. Well, a launch like this of a new blockchain that has this kind of backing of really genuine, great people in the space. That's a place where you can be there before, uh, and be one of those moments for yourself. Um, so that would be my biggest call to action right now. Um, and as totally. I said below. Uh, yeah, so. no, absolutely, Justin. And again, I mean, we we would not put our reputation on the line. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm invested personally. Uh, we have also invested with the EMP uh, Treasury. Again, nothing irresponsible, uh, but to get exposure. And, you know, I think that this is something that uh, is, you know, again, for lack of a better word, a bit of a unicorn. I mean, we, we've we seen uh, uh, in my seven years of crypto, I can count on one hand, uh, you know, the amount of opportunities uh, to get into an actual uh, layer one or layer two blockchain. And, you know, uh, none of them had the tech behind it that L1, L1X does. So, uh, and again, you know, not financial advice, obviously do your own research. They, they definitely have to deliver uh, on uh, everything that they say they're gonna do, you know, and I'm sure that may be a bit of a bumpy road uh, as with all projects, uh, but the fact that they have an actual test net up and running uh, is really, really promising to me. Uh, and again, all of you are more than welcome to join their Discord and play with the, um, uh, the test net uh, on your own as well. So uh, again, I, I think the opportunity uh, is is pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, obviously never invest more than you can afford to lose. Uh, definitely realize that there is a lot of opportunity costs. Meaning, uh, you know, that the vesting schedule that I mentioned earlier, uh, it doesn't start until the chain actually goes live. So there is still about three, three or four months here. Um, you know, that uh, you're not going to be earning anything waiting for this to come out. Um, again, they're shooting for August. Uh, uh, I've been told, again, through L1X, uh, that they are ahead of schedule. Uh, a lot of the timing has to do with um, uh, what they hope is, a, you know, the next bull run as well, uh, which could also really catapult this uh, this project for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's huge. And and again, going to kind of what you point you pointed out there is uh, no amount is a bad amount right now in this kind of endeavor. And so it's whatever you're comfortable with. The nice thing is there's no minimums. I, I'm sorry, I guess I shouldn't say that. Is, it, is there a minimum? There is actually. So the minimum is 100 bucks. Okay. So again, uh, you know, and it is 
per transaction. So that was another thing. Um, another really cool way that we set up the pre-sale is um, you can contribute multiple times. So uh, if you go to the pre-sale page, um, uh, in the upper right hand, there's a button that says my wallet. Uh, and you'll be able to go. So this is the actual foundation page. Uh, if you go to l1xpresale.com. Oh, sorry, yep, sorry. absolutely, Justin. You got it, bro. Uh, that is our actual EMP raise. Um, and that will be a little bit more. Uh, uh, that's for ours specifically. So um, once you get that pulled up, I'll, I'll show it. But uh, if you go to, yeah, uh, should be loading. Oh, oh maybe not. L, I made L1X, it spell something wrong. Yeah. That's all right. L1. L1xpresale.com. Oh, no dot. Okay, presale. Oh, there we go. I already had it in there somewhere. Yeah, no there worries, but are. there it is. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we've already raised about 414000 um, bucks. And so, yeah, up in the upper right, you would connect your wallet. Then it would say, uh, you don't have to do this on no, stream, no. but yeah, uh, it says uh, my wallet. And then uh, it will show you literally uh, the date and the time, uh, as well as the amount that you've contributed. Um, nice. So you can keep track of uh, how much you've uh, 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 contributed. And uh, again, I know a lot of people are waiting for funds uh, to come over, or maybe you're waiting on a paycheck. Uh, so you can contribute as many times as you want, uh, but it is a hundred dollars per uh, contribution. So uh, nice. I'll just make sure yeah, that you're aware of that for sure. So, so with that in mind, I guess the one thing that I, again, for people and not financial advice, but just going through some, some problem solving that I like to go through when it comes to being an investor type person, uh, working for a bank, um, is dollar cost averaging is always a great thing. I know that we're not dollar cost averaging into a token value right now. Uh, but if you, but the problem is people don't know how to save anymore. Um, so by possibly looking at maybe, okay, I can do a hundred dollars a week. Okay. Put it in there. I can do a hundred dollars every two weeks. Okay. Take $50 a week and put it aside and then throw it in. So there's lots of different ways you can break this down. That's comfortable for you, but really honestly, even just getting a hundred dollars into something like this, there's still opportunity. So don't, uh, don't let that stop you. If you're not sure how much you have, um, just if it's something that interests you and when you do your own research, if you feel that this is something that, that hits you and, and, and if any of this conversation tickled you a bit, as I call it, not to sound creepy, um, <laughs> then by all yeah. means, um, head in there and make that savings and find a way to do that. Even if it's saving five bucks a week for several weeks, you have time right now to do that. So, um, so get, get totally. into the discord and go for that. Yep. And, and I'm, I'm tickled Justin for sure, man. <laughs> uh, again, we, we may come across, uh, and some of the AMAs I come across, uh, a little bit overhyped maybe, <laughs> but, uh, I, I really am passionate about, you know, building and what, uh, opportunity that uh, L1X can solve uh, and provide for all of us. Um, and, and to your point, I mean, it is absolutely 100% um, uh, within reason to just uh, wait and see if, you know, the chain actually launches. Uh, but if you do that, you know, you're giving up that potential 5X uh, on, on the launch price. So, you know, again, depending on everybody's risk tolerance, you know, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to to wait, um, but I know that again, I am taking advantage of uh, this pre-sale price because uh, I know I'm going to need L1X tokens uh, anyway. And again, just to reiterate, not only is this a gas token uh, of the chain, so you will need it uh, to, to interact uh, just like you would anywhere else. Um, uh, but it's also going to be the uh, the native asset of the exchange as well. So that's immediate use case. Uh, you'll be able to stake it or provide liquidity with your L1X uh, and earn a, a real revenue share uh, of the DEX itself. So uh, again, going through uh, an actual rev share model, um, uh, there is no you know uh, smoke and mirrors or you know uh, fancy pontonomics or uh, you know a, a token that uh, only inflates uh, with no other use case. So uh, uh, we will literally be using L1X, which again, it's bullish for price action um, uh, of mm -hmm. L1X itself, because uh, it's a lot more lucrative to hold it uh, or, or utilize it than sell it. So nice. No, that's great. Um, and I guess not that I want to spend uh, or take away from the layer 1X that we're talking about, uh, but I would like to move on for a few not to spend too much time on the others, but is there anything else we'd like to mention about this one? I think we've gotten all kind of the, the hierarchy or the overarching kind of idea. Um, from now, it's basically up to them, I guess, to do some research and uh, see if it's for them. 
Totally. No, I think we covered everything. I uh, Again, you know, join the L1X Discord. Uh, there's a lot of very helpful people there uh, that can answer questions. Uh, we have our own uh, sub uh, channel in the L1X uh, Discord as well that will give updates on the exchange. Um, so again, uh, we're trying to, to get through this raise, uh, uh, whatever comes first, either the, the hard cap or uh, March 14th. Uh, mm -hmm. And then after that, we will be going full on uh, on, again, releasing the name of the decks, uh, the preliminary, uh, you know, roadmap, uh, all the the uh, economics involved. Um, so again, all that will be coming. Lots of info to come. So lots of stuff to digest. And Yabonks is going to be totally transparent, as he always is. I'm probably going to try to scrounge up some funds for from selling some of other tokens to get into this. I agree, I sir. <laughs> I will be doing the same. I will commit. I'm so again. I like telling people what I'm doing. Again, not financial advice, but people do ask me regardless. So I figure there's no point in not coming out with it. Um, but I'm excited for a new chain. Uh, I've never, like I said, I have not experienced it. Um, so I mean, I know we have a couple other ones kind of sneaking around there, uh, but nothing really to the extent and thought process and opportunity for again the little guy um big time and again for the ease of of use and ease of access to what i'm hearing from this one um so that's what excites me the most and i think what makes me want to take a peek at this for sure um so quickly before we go um because i'm not a emp investor and should have my hand slapped for not being that way um there is there was a question i think was directed at emp um and this gentleman is, is not always, the, he doesn't like certain projects. I'm not saying he doesn't like yours, but he was asking, can you give a quick synopsis of a list of revenue sources coming from outside the protocol? Uh, which I think you guys have probably had the most of any of your types of protocols. Um, but I think this, so I'm just so everybody knows, I'm going to EMP right now for a few seconds, just to close things off, because I do want, I've, I've, wanted to get involved in that protocol, have avoided it for whatever reason, because I haven't had funds or whatever. Uh, luckily, my my DeFi journey is making a really nice turnaround. And I have funds to invest in these things that I've always wanted to that are still around, which is one big <laughs> or big praise to you. Um, so I guess you don't mind answering that question, then I'd like to maybe know if being a newbie other than going and educating myself, what I would maybe do if I wanted to look into EMP at all. I love this. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, you know, Justin, we'll, uh, we'll hold your hand, brother. And Scott, uh, this is a great question. You know, we're, we're big on transparency. You know, uh, we, we used to do literally daily AMAs uh, on our YouTube channel uh, that go over everything about the protocol, every question anybody would have. Uh, over the last few months, we moved to a uh, twice a week uh, AMA instead of every day, uh, just because we're so busy building uh, in the background. But uh, yeah, we, we are huge on real revenue at EMP. And again, I think that is going to be the new wave of DeFi. Uh, any project that you're getting into that cannot provide real revenue will fail. And again, I'll go uh, on record to say that, uh, you know, you have to have some uh, income streams and revenue streams that are not reliant on new volume uh, or new users. So uh, we have a, ma uh, a very healthy treasury even today at EMP, uh, and we, we kind of get some some pushback on, you know, uh, people say, well, why don't you just use that treasury to get back to PEG? Well, again, that is providing exit liquidity for people that are bad actors uh, or even people that just don't want to uh, stick around. And now we would be broke. Uh, the treasury would be broke and uh, it would be the end of the protocol. So instead, what we do uh, is we use our treasury to produce a yield. And then that yield is what we use to support EMP long term. So again, that's a very different uh, approach than a lot of other protocols. And so uh, to answer the question, uh, I mean, we, we could do a whole AMA on our revenue streams alone. Uh, I'll do my best to give a fast uh, recap, but um, uh, the major revenue stream is from uh, our detonator as a service. So uh, our detonator style contracts are proprietary code. Um, they are a very unique uh, gamified smart contract uh, that really incentivizes liquidity providing. And typically with liquidity providers, you uh, you have to uh, incentivize them through a different token or uh, you know uh, uh, giving away the native asset, which can actually hurt 
the token price because they have to dump it to take profit. Well, yeah, the, the detonator contract uh, allows for all the liquidity pro- providers to be rewarded without inflating uh, that token. So it's been very revolutionary. Uh, you know, all of our detonator partners uh, have done about 400,000 uh, at the minimum of, of added uh, liquidity to their projects, uh, which is just unbelievable. So that's our, our major revenue stream. And I didn't even mention this earlier, but uh, the, the DEX on L1X will also have that revolutionary uh, technology, the detonator service, uh, as well as some really innovative um, uh, tech from DEX Finance. So uh, DEX Finance rolled out what they're calling their DEX Vaults, uh, and they're a hybrid model of the beefy auto balancer and a balancer style uh, uh, contract within uh, the assets themselves. So again, we, it's very uh, a bit uh, complicated, but their tech um, is, is really amazing. And so those vaults will be utilized in the exchange. And imagine being able to have multiple assets on multiple chains all in one vault. Uh, that is then auto compounding uh, and always um, growing through, again, uh, that beefy uh, concept. So, uh, again, look into that. Um, they're, they're doing great stuff as well. Um, uh, but, yeah, that's, that's, that's our big revenue stream. Uh, we're also heavily invested in uh, Splinterlands, uh, which is a play-to-earn game on the Hive blockchain. Uh, we also have uh, an extensive affiliate uh, network um, uh, through uh, ledgers and uh, you know all, all these affiliate links uh, that we use. Uh, that's real revenue. Uh, we have our YouTube channel. Uh, that's not a lot of revenue, uh, but it, it definitely is growing. Uh, and uh, we've been able to generate revenue through that. And then uh, simply you know just um, going into other uh, protocols that produce yield for us. Uh, you know again uh, we we a lot of our partners uh, were invested in MDB. Uh, we're invested in. Uh, you know, a, a lot of projects uh, that we all want to support uh, in the crypto space, and all of those produce yield for us to then uh, support EMP. But, you know, uh, that being said, uh, even though we have all these revenue streams, the exchange uh, could literally 100x our, our revenue stream uh, model uh, when this launches. So, you know, uh, again, I said earlier, you know, PancakeSwap does uh, $400,000 a day in fees. Uh, even if we had a small percentage of that, uh, that would be, you know, potentially thousands and thousands of dollars a day that are going to support PEG, uh, you know, support the price of EMP, or go into detonator and reactor, you know, to help bolster those pool balances as well. So. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. And then I guess just, uh, and, and as Yabong says, yes, as it always well, wow, crazy revenue. I agree. Um, so lastly thing, I guess, before we, we uh, go out, uh, and again, I'll, I'll bring it back to layer one, obviously, but um, any uh, advice for a guy that maybe hasn't gone in there yet and where yeah. I put a, a few bucks if I decided to? Absolutely, brother. So again, you know, I know a lot of people maybe heard about EMP. You know, uh, I get it. Like our, 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 our platform can be very complicated. Uh, on the surface and that's another reason why i'm so excited for emp fusion um is that we really streamline the process uh we, we're not changing you know the goalposts we're we're still hoping to build uh, we, we already have built uh an amazing uh passive income platform with exposure to ethereum um uh, uh, as well as bnb uh and really with fusion you get exposure to all blue chips uh, when, and all of that is, is happening, you know, within, uh, you know, we're talking months, not not years. Uh, so that's coming very soon. Uh, so, yeah, if you're new to EMP, um, uh, again, we, we give the same advice uh, to everybody. Uh, it, it's really simple. You just, you probably want to start in the farm. So uh, if you had, say, you know, $100 to invest, uh, you would take 50 of those dollars and buy EMP off the market. Uh, and you would take the other 50 and buy uh, EMP, uh, I'm sorry, Ethereum, BEP20 Ethereum. Uh, uh, it's actual ETH. Uh, again, it, it's backed by uh, uh, BNB uh, or, or Binance. So you hope that they have that ETH in the reserves. Um, uh, but uh, th- then you pair it up as LP, you put it in the farm, uh, and then you start earning ETH shares. And ETH share is the profit-taking vehicle uh, of 
our protocol. So, you know, again, we, we, we get people that uh, think we're a little crazy because we always say, don't sell EMP. Um, and the reason that we say that is that, um, you know, uh, EMP is a yield producing asset. So, you know, if you want to exit the protocol and leave and move on, then sure, you can sell EMP um, uh, and, and realize your gains. Uh, but if you want a passive income, you know, the idea is that you continue to build your LP position uh, in the farms to earn e-share, and then e-share can be sold um, uh, for profit uh, or to go back in uh, and compound. Um, so that's a very, very key thing uh, that, again, uh, unfortunately, with the peg going down and, and the overall market sentiment, uh, we see a lot of people exiting uh, EMP uh, at the bottom, in my opinion. Uh, again, now financial advice. Uh, we've seen a really great uprise uh, in eShare and, and EMP uh, already. Uh, and, you know, uh, owning EMP uh, will be very, very important uh, when we go to Fusion as well. So, you know, uh, I, again, I think uh, the word is getting out and, you know, now is, a, is as good a time as ever uh, to dip your toe in the water um, and, and get some positions uh, for sure. Again, not financial advice. Of course, yeah. of course. But but yes, I will take a little peek at that and maybe do that. Grab those two tokens, put them together, put them inside the farm and then take that e-share and then and put that aside as well and keep it, keep it uh keep it moving guys keep it revolving i guess into more yeah and over time totally um, and we, yeah we have another vault for your e-share where you can earn more e-share with your e-share so uh, yeah we have a lot of what we call uh, and again people laugh at us for this but we call them infinite money loops yeah. uh because there are a lot of ways that the protocol is able to support itself um yeah. Uh, and even, you know, once you get familiar with that, I would definitely say look into detonator and reactor. Uh, those are a little more gamified uh, and you do have to participate uh, in those uh, daily. Um, uh, but the pool balance uh, on those is finally starting to uh, plateau and, and we could see a major run uh, on, on those as well. So, yeah, uh, the, the ecosystem is prime uh, for uh, all, all uh, the, the cycle to start all over again. For sure. Nice. And the last EMP plug, I guess I'll do is, is, is the one big thing that you guys, your claim to fame, I think, uh, and that I've heard on many occasions is that you have an academy there and you have a way to train people, even brand new people to crypto. You have, uh, um, a library there, I guess, if you will, of information for those people. So that's fantastic. And I appreciate you guys for that. Yeah, totally, brother. And that was a big thing, you know, for me starting EMP, you know, I was always big on education and I would have given literally, uh, you know, thousands of dollars to learn uh, when I first started in crypto, what we give away for free uh, in that academy. So the first few videos are a lot more, you know, just about uh, how to get set up, uh, how to be a better DeFi user. Uh, and then uh, the other videos are about, you know, how to interact with our protocol uh, overall so yeah please uh give it a look and uh it's worth your time for sure and it looks like like i said i knew there was going to be somebody on here that didn't know about emp yet so <laughs> what channel yeah, you guys are you guys on bsc i love it yep um, yeah we are on bsc yep yeah. so again we are transacting in uh bep 20 eth so it can be kind of confusing, uh, but we're on BSC. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank. I, I can't thank you enough for this. I really, I, I know um, I've been doing this for about six months or so, but I've still been getting my feet wet. And I, I can't say I, I, I'm not very happy. I'm so happy to have you had you here. And I appreciate you coming and joining me because um, you're definitely an asset, like I said, to this industry. Thank you, brother. That really means a lot. You know, we, uh, uh, my personal life, you know, I've always had the attitude of uh, never give up and failure uh, is not an option. And we, we bring that to EMP. I mean, again, you know, uh, during the bear market, we've been doing nothing but trying to build uh, our asses off uh, to get us back on track. Um, and I think once Fusion is live, people will see, man, like EMP really really did pull it off and you know we're, we're back to peg and uh everybody's happy again and that's just in time for the bull run uh, yeah. and then uh you know the launch of this new blockchain and a whole nother revenue stream so again the future is very bright uh at emp and uh, i really appreciate your support uh justin and again brother i would love to to be back on for some update amas for sure 
So. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate this. And I definitely would love that as well. Um, so everybody, uh, like I said, go ahead to the discord. The link is going to be in the video. It already is, but it'll be there obviously when it loads up for replays um, and, uh, and take a really close look at, at uh, the uh, layer one X uh, presale if you can, uh, and if not a financial advice. And then obviously, like I said, do take a look, go to EMP. I understand that uh, it's, it's maybe a little bit DGN for some people or whatever, but uh, AJ is, a guy that creates and a con constantly uh, uh, is evolving his his systems and evolving what he does in the system and has been here long enough that I think you guys can uh, that there's some value to what he offers uh, if it's nothing but getting educated that's all I think you would appreciate from anybody um and absolutely what so. Yeah, no, 100%, brother. And that's another thing uh, that makes us so different. You know, uh, everybody says, ape in, ape in. Well, no, like, I want people to be educated. And really, that helps not only you as the, uh, you know, participant uh, or investor, um, but it helps the protocol overall. That's why seniors protocols uh, can be so powerful. But uh, in order to have that happen, you have to have, you know, an educated investor. So again, definitely uh, I'll do your own research and, uh, you know, we're more than happy to help. You know, we're, we're in our Discord and Telegram. Um, we're not the, the kind of people that say, uh, read the white paper or, uh, you know, uh, that's a dumb question. Uh, we literally answer everything. So nice. yeah, we'd, we'd love to see all of you uh, over there for sure. Yeah. Well, that's my biggest thing that I talk about in my channel is I just, I, people, we, we all keep making the same mistakes over and over again in life. And if we don't change uh, and stop investing in the wrong way, because there really is a wrong way to invest. Um, if we don't stop doing that, we're going to see, you can't come into DeFi and go, oh, because I didn't make my 100x here, I'm going to be able to do it here. It doesn't work that way. Um, and I'm living proof. I've made my mistakes. I learned from them and I've created this channel because I don't want other people to do that. Um, and so, yeah, please take advantage of the advice you can get and the free advice that's everywhere. Uh, and, and yeah, thank you so much, so much, AJ. And um, have yourself a fantastic evening. All right, brother. You as well. Much love. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.